oftentimes talk about Musa alayhi salam, but we miss and maybe we don't focus as much on someone who is related to Musa alayhi salam, who I personally gained a lot of inspiration from, and that is the mother of Musa alayhi salam. Now, what happened to this woman is that she lived in a time when children, when, when, when little boys were being killed, and she has a little boy. Now, I want to take a moment and reflect on this for a second. When you're afraid, when you're afraid of losing something that you love, what is your knee-jerk reaction? What is our reflexive, you know, immediate, instinctive reaction when we're afraid of losing something that we love? Our instinctive reaction is to hold it tighter, is to attach to it and to cling to it harder and more intensely because we're afraid of losing it. Now Musa alayhi salam's mother is actually being told to do the exact opposite. She is actually being told to let him go. She's actually being told that if you want to keep him, you have to let him go. That if you actually want this to be protected, you have to, you have to put your trust in Allah and you have to let him go. And so what she's being told to do is to put her child in the river. Can you just think for a moment the amount of tawakkul, the amount of trust that she has to have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to let him go and put him in the river? And yet, this is exactly the lesson of that. Had she held on to Musa alayhi salam, he would have been killed. There is an irony here because she is actually by letting him go and putting her trust in Allah, she's protecting him. So she is being told to let him go and put him in the river. But she's being given a promise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a promise to this woman. And he says to her, Inna raduhu ilayki. We will return him to you. So the promise of Allah is trust me, I'll bring him back to you. But just trust me right now and I'll take care of him during this period of time. But just trust me and I'll bring him back to you. Now, there's something else that really strikes me about this part of the story. And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taha, that when he did return Musa to his mother, and, 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 and by the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned Musa to his mother in a very miraculous way. And it also shows, there's so many lessons, subhanAllah. It shows that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withholds as part of his plan. So how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala withhold in order to return? He made Musa alayhi salam reject all other women to, 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 to take milk from. That he rejected all the other women so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned Musa alayhi salam to his mother. Now, when Allah explains this return, and you know, subhanAllah, I was, I was at a retreat and at the beginning of the retreat, before the retreat had started, um, the Shaykh said, you know, we had like a period of time where we would just read just a portion of Qur'an. And so what I did was I just opened up to one of my favorite surahs, which is Surah Taha. So I opened up and I read Surah Taha and I reflected on basically probably the first 15 ayahs or so of Surah Taha. And I got to this one verse and it just struck me in a way that I never realized before. And that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ila ummihi kay wala tahzan. That we returned Musa to his mother. Now it's the reason why that he states that blew me away. He said that we returned Musa to his mother so that her eyes would be cool and she wouldn't be sad. Why did that strike me so much? Because we go through periods in our lives of extreme sadness. And sometimes we think that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to people. It doesn't matter even to, to sometimes we may feel that it doesn't matter to Allah. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making history happen because of one woman's sadness. Just because of one woman's sadness, he is doing something that will be, that will make Literal, like literally, it will make history in, 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 in throughout, throughout till the end of time. And that's because he didn't want one woman, she wasn't a prophet, she was a woman, right? He didn't want one woman to be sad. And he wanted one woman to have that peace. So he said, we returned him to his mother so that she would have the coolness of her eyes and she would not be sad. And there's another reason, a third reason that Allah says, وَلِتَعْلَمَ أَنَّ وَعْدَ اللَّهِ حَقٍ 
and so that she would know that the promise of Allah is true. Why are we being told this story? Because every single one of us are going to be tested and we're all tested in different ways. And there's going to be times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make us be, we're going to have to choose. We're going to have to make decisions between what we love and what Allah loves, between our plan and Allah's plan, right? And so what we learn from this story is that when we choose Allah, Allah will bring back to us and replace and even bring us something better than what it was that we gave up for his sake. Because she's letting go of something for Allah's sake, right? And she's putting her trust in Allah. And then what does Allah do? He returns Musa to his mother. And not only does he do that, he protects Musa. And had she not done that, then she would have lost Musa. She would have actually lost him had she not let him go. And so what she had to do was let him go so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him and then brought him back to her. Now what's very interesting is this. Allah says, and this is also a lesson for us folks. Focus on this. Allah, in a, I just finished saying that Pharaoh was the greatest tyrant, right? Pharaoh is the one who's killing the babies. Pharaoh is the, is the, is the murderer here. And where does Musa salam go? He goes to the actual home, the house of the enemy. Now, why do I want us to reflect on that? Because it shows the power of Allah. It shows that Allah is the protector. It means that even if you are in the mouth of the lion, literally, even if you are overtaken by the enemy, if Allah protects you, you no harm will come to you. That's the other part of this story because Allah is telling us that he was an enemy. He was an enemy, Ado. He was an enemy to Musa alayhi salam. He was an enemy of Allah. And it was in his home that Allah put Musa alayhi salam, showing us that Allah is the protector. Even if you're in the middle of the storm, even if you're in the home of the enemy, even if the enemy is living right there next to you, Allah can protect you still. And Allah protected Musa alayhi salam and then brought him back to his mother. Now, one of the reasons why this story, there's many reasons, but there's a lot of reasons why this story was very personal to me. And one of the reasons why that there came a point when I had to make some very difficult decisions. And in those decisions, I had to, I had to be separated from people that I loved. And I had to let go. But when I did that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I had full trust, and, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would protect, and Allah would take care of, and Allah would return. And Allah keeps His promise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps His promise. And every single one of you, I know that in one way or another, there are going to be times when you are going to have to make difficult decisions. But if you put your trust in Allah, this is what Allah is teaching us. When you put your trust in Allah, just like he returned Musa alayhi salam to his mother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps his promise. So that she would know that the promise of Allah is true. And that everyone till the end of time would know that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is true.